Welcome back to Watch Talk. On today's video, we're going to be explaining why I think Timex is the first fashion watch. Before you go down in the comments below saying Timex has horological history, it has this, it has that. What is, you know, how could you compare it to Movado? How dare you go straight to horology school and just know what you're doing? Well, before you all go crazy on me, because I know there's a huge, especially on YouTube, YouTubers I watch, there, there's a huge market for these, especially through eBay. Most people get it through eBay and they're very affordable vintage pieces, right? So it came to my mind. I said, well, there's a reason why they're around $100 for a Timex modeling. There's a reason why jewelry places won't take them. And a lot of collectors don't think they're very horologically significant. I know that I'm talking just the watch itself. I first want to jump in the history with you, explain the actual materials used in the watch and why I think it is a predecessor to the quartz fashion watch. And I want to talk to you about exactly what I think about the brand, what, why I'm not a collector of Timex and why I'm just not a huge fan of Timex themselves. Jumping right into it, let's get with the history. I'm going to start with the history with Waterbury and them making watches during World War I. If you want me to actually go back further, I can make a special video just on that. So comment down below, like the video, and then I'll go make another video if you guys like this type of format where I talk about the history of Timex. Jumping into it, so the Waterbury Watch Company produced movements during the war, World War I in trenches they needed to tell the time quickly. So they, they got the contract and they started producing movements. I'm going to take you a bit later into the game now. So after they've done this, it turned into U.S. Time Corp uh, Corporation. And they, they didn't just do watches. I have to say something. Timex did not just make watches for the whole history of Timex. No, they actually, I believe they helped the government make missiles when they were under US Time Corp and different weapons during the Cuban Missile Crisis, even the predecessor during World War II. So they actually collaborated, collaborated with the US government. Very, very cool actually history on that. Then going further in 1950s, they started producing Timex on their dials. It was a huge hit. Like after a few, a couple of years, people really knew what Timex was. So after through the 50s till 1969 is when they changed their name to Timex Corporation. That's when they made, they, they became Timex. And from the 50s, 60s, 70s, until when the courts really hit, they were producing these movements. I'm gonna go now into the movements and the build quality. This is my personal opinion. But I think most of you will agree that chrome plated brass is a very, very cheap material. Uh, nowadays, I'm thinking of Vostok. They use chrome plated brass, but not in their movements. They actually use it on the bezel. They don't use it in their actual movements. They use a, a lot better materials, in my opinion, and I think most people's. So what Timex really, really thought of, and they were very smart because this has never really been done before. They thought most consumers, not the watch enthusiasts, but most consumers don't care what the movement is. But I never cared what a watch movement is until I started my uh, expedition into this hobby and, and I started really embracing it. But before I, I didn't care that much. I, I talked to collectors, believe it or not. I have talked to collectors that don't know the difference between automatic and quartz. And they have very high-end pieces. Well, I'm talking like Breitling and Cartier. They had these type of pieces in their watch collection and they don't know the difference between quartz and automatic. That boggles my mind and that's a whole nother video in itself. But coming back to this, so most people didn't care about the movement and Timex realized that the dial and the sunburst effect or whatever effect they put on there, whatever the, the numerals are and the actual build of the watch people care about. So they put, they were ranging between 10 to $15 in the very old days of watches. If we're talking the 50s, 60s and in counting for inflation, I think that's around a hundred dollars nowadays, 
maybe a little less, maybe a little more. I don't know the exact calculation, but I think it's around that price from the 50s. So you're paying 10 bucks and you're getting a beautiful dial. I have to say they did make their dials very nice. I, I, I'm not a collector, but I have to agree. You're getting a waterproof case. No, you know, they, they, they made them very robust. And we'll talk about the robustness of the watch. But they had no respect in the watchmakers. Uh, I'll be honest, if you took a Timex into a watchmaker, they'll, they'll probably laugh at you or probably pour a, a lighter fluid. That's what they did. They poured lighter fluid onto the movement to clean it. Like they, they dunked it. It's like, it's a, it's a watch movement. It's not, it's not like a, it just bothers me. That bothers me a lot because it, the longevity of a watch really matters to me. If you're going to go out and buy a watch, even if it's an affordable watch, like the SKX, for instance, the longevity or the replacement of, of a movement really matters to me of that standard of servicing and everything. So the, there's a lot of misconceptions with the watch movement. I want to go over the movement. It's chrome plated brass. Brass is a base metal. You can pick it up for almost nothing. Brass, very, very cheap. There, there's uh, some people that say it, there's only one screw in the actual movement. That's not true. Together, the whole movement has around four screws. There are, you know, elements. Of, it, it is an automatic watch. There's no jewels. So there's the jewel. A typically a jewel, when you think about it, is a high end piece where you look into it. But a, a real jewel is something that causes less friction on the uh, on the fork, so the, the, the pension fork. So it goes back and forth to create an oscillation every, I believe, I, it, depending on the movement, three to four times. And that's why you get the sweeping motion. So on their fork, they don't have that. They have a very, very thin amount of brass and it hits back against each other. So eventually that's gonna break, it's gonna wear out. The, the timekeeping is not gonna be the best over time. It's, a, it's just a fact. And if you want to service it, if you really care about it, it's not worth your time to service it because the, it, especially nowadays, servicing it is really not worth it. You can go on eBay and just pick up the actual movement for cheaper than servicing it. So it's my, it's a fact. It's sort of a disposable watch. I, I, I understand that there, there's a whole other argument to that. There's a lot of disposable watches. You could say the 7S26 movement in the SNK collection and in the actual uh, SKX collection is a disposable movement because it's cheaper to buy a new one than actually go get it serviced by Seiko. So there, there's a whole other thing, but those movements really, there's no comparison between Timex movement and a Seiko movement. It's just a fact. Now I'm talking vintage. We're not talking nowadays because we'll get to the nowadays. So they made these movements. A lot of them were just hand wind um, and they're, they're waterproof, they're robust because it's, there's really not, not they're not that complicated movements. They're very uh, simple, simplified and it's very, very cheap to mass produce. So that's number one, it was mass produced and they cared more about their title of the watch. They cared more about the outside look, which there's nothing wrong with it. Then here comes very familiar sounding to the nowadays fashion watches. They have the sponsorships. They have Louis Armstrong, got myself a Timex. So he's singing these songs. There's a uh, huge, huge players in the game. Uh, Baseball, every every big Yankee, they're, they're all wearing Timex. They're all promoting it. They're, they're, they're just, it's something that's insane to me. It's just insane that they had all this influence. Because back then, there's no Snapchat. There's no Instagram. There's there's nothing. There's nothing back then. They, they had the newsreel at the movie theaters. They had, some people have televisions and the ads. That's what it was. The only time you would get something like that is ads. And they they covered the ads so well. They, 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 they displayed everything. It was just very, very horological. So they, they had the ads, they had the old movement, a very affordable mass produced movement, I should say. And then they had the um, case construction where people would like to look at the dial more than the actual movement. 
then that takes us through the years. So these three things to me is the first fashion watch, the first mass produced fashion watch. It's a fact to me. Then they, when the quartz crisis hit, it really hit the business bad because when quartz came in, why ever, why would somebody buy a, a very low end automatic movement when they can just get a quartz, which is more accurate, more robust, just a better watch in general, a quartz piece. So you buy the quartz, they changed everything to quartz. They didn't have too many hits. They, they had some quartz pieces until the Iron Man in 1986. The Iron Man from 1986 to 1996 was one of the biggest sellers in the US. I believe Bill Clinton wore an Iron Man. These are huge, huge horological pieces. I'm, I'm more of a fan of the G-Shock line because I like the story behind that, but the, the Timex story is, is fantastic. I will not dispute with you, the Timex Iron Man is a great watch, period. It's, it's fantastic. Then they made their other lines more nowadays. They have the Weekender line. They have uh, you know, field watches. They have, they have the Timex Expedition and different watches like that. So coming to nowadays in 2008, they were losing profit, I think for around four years before that, somewhere around that. And they, um, they got taken over by a Dutch holding company in 2008. So the Dutch own it now, but it's still in the US, you know, it's a US company. And that, that, that's what happens. That's what happens with most brands, they get bought out. And uh, they introduced their automatic watches a few years ago with their 34 millimeter Timex Marlin, they had a seagull in it. So they don't produce their own movements. Of course, they wouldn't use their old movements because I'll be frank, nobody wants to buy those movements. I, I'm gonna be honest. But, and they put a $200 price on it. Little expensive, but it's fine for an automatic watch. If, you, if you're a big Timex fanboy, because I know there's a lot out there, it's fine to go pay a couple hundred for that. Then after that, uh, a year later or so, they released uh, a, a full collection with Miyoto movements. And Miyotos are great movements. You know, they're off the shelf. There's some issues with them, but all in all, they're fine movements. And they're charging between, what, 100 150 for them. Not bad prices for those type of watches. And that leads us to nowadays. They have quartz. They have uh, uh, some of their new line of automatic watches. Not a bad company. The difference between Movado movements, they actually advertise it as a luxury brand. That's what they advertise it as. With Timex, they never flat out said it was a luxury brand. If you go back in the advertisements, they say it looks like a luxury watch. You can't even tell the difference. That's what some guy said. So they're very a little fishy on the advertisement, but not as bad as nowadays. So I really hope you all enjoy. Comment down below. Tell me if you despise me for talking bad about Timex, but I did talk good about Timex. I think some of their lines are really, really nice, uh, especially their quartz lines. They're very affordable, around 50 bucks. Their older stuff, they, they sold for 10, but now they're selling for 100. The inflation we're talking about. Not the best buy, I, I'm I'm saying that, but if you if you like Timex, if your father had a Timex, if you have a connection to Timex, go ahead, purchase one. Nobody's nobody's gonna say it's a horrible watch. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying they started doing movements very cheaply and putting their money in their dial and advertisement. I think most of their money went into their advertisement and their dials, the other fashion brands. I wanna thank you all for watching. Please subscribe please hit that like button. It really does support the channel and I'll catch you in the next one.